Haile Selassie I, the man, the myth, the legacy, Ethiopia's last emperor. What do you think of when you hear the name Haile Selassie? For many, he is viewed as a godlike figure, a messianic savior prophesied in biblical scripture. To others, he was a feudal autocrat who clung to power as the world changed around him. But who was the real Haile Selassie? In this video, we'll explore the life of this iconic and contradictory figure, from his early rise to power to his mythologization by the Rastafari movement to his controversial reign over Ethiopia. There's no denying Selassie left an immense legacy, but how should history remember this man who was emperor during a pivotal time for Ethiopia and Africa? Stick around as we examine the man, the myth, and the legacy of Haile Selassie I, Ethiopia's last emperor. The year was 1930. As ruthless European imperial powers devoured Africa, one ancient kingdom stood alone as a powerful symbol of African strength and sovereignty, Ethiopia. The only nation aside from Liberia to remain uncolonized. That same pivotal year, a new monarch stepped forth to don Ethiopia's imperial crown, Rastafari Makonnen, soon to be crowned Emperor Haile Selassie I. For many Ethiopians initially, he represented the promise of a modern, dignified Ethiopia governed with wisdom and security. But the complex path he would walk over the next four decades as emperor would reveal a far more complicated and contradictory legacy. Selassie's story began shrouded in both privilege and misfortune. He was born Lijetafari Makonnen in 1892 of Ethiopia's ancient Solomonic dynasty said to be descended from the legendary biblical romance between King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. But Selassie's childhood was marked by devastating loss, as both his parents passed away by the time he was just four years old. The young orphan found protection under the wing of his first cousin, Saleh Mariam, recently crowned Emperor Menelik II. Sheltered within the royal palace, Tafari thrived under the guidance of Emperor Menelik. The charismatic young lad quickly won the aging ruler's favor who supervised his education and granted him the governorship of Harar province at only the age of 14. Reveling in the high-stakes world of imperial politics, Tafari displayed a blend of intellect, charm, and ruthless ambition during his young age. While still a teenager, he played a key role in removing Menelik's hand-picked heir, promoting Menelik's daughter, Zauditu, as an easily influenced placeholder empress. By 1917, just 20 years old, Tafari had outmaneuvered rivals to be named both regent and heir to the throne. For all intents, the power behind Zalditu's throne. As regent, he enacted reforms and modernized institutions while brazenly consolidating his personal control. After years of shrewd political maneuvering, Tafari's moment finally arrived in 1930 with Zoditu's sudden death. Swiftly moving to ease the opportunity, he ascended as His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, King of Kings, Conquering Lion of Judah. Titles steeped in religious meaning and dynastic significance. To supporters, he embodied Ethiopia's hopes for dignity, sovereignty, and progress. But unbeknownst to the new emperor, he was also becoming the face of an emerging religious movement thousands of miles away. Out of Jamaica's stark racial inequality and oppression was born a new theology, Rastafarianism. Its adherents proclaimed this young Ethiopian emperor fulfilled ancient prophecy as the long-awaited messianic black king who would soon deliver salvation to the oppressed African diaspora. To the Rastas, Ethiopia was the promised land of Zion and Haile Selassie, the living God incarnate, the redemptive figure foretold in Holy Scripture. Selassie remained ambiguous towards this zealous worship, 
neither confirming nor denying his supposed divinity. But there's no doubt this mystical aura boosting his prestige across Africa and the Caribbean came at a fortuitous time early in his reign, because unforeseen challenges to his rule were looming just over the horizon. In October 1935, the expansionist forces of fascist Italy invaded Ethiopia, equipped with modern weapons and poison gas. Intent on building a new Italian empire, the invasion had been ordered by dictator Benito Mussolini as revenge for Italy's humiliating defeat at Ethiopian hands decades earlier. Selassie gave an impassioned speech at the League of Nations in Geneva, admonishing them for failing to stand against this brazen act of unprovoked aggression. However, the League proved unwilling to enforce its lofty ideals of collective security and international law. Against the ruthless modern war machine of fascist Italy, Selassie's feudal army stood little chance despite massively outnumbering the invaders. Soon the emperor found himself forced into exile as Mussolini absorbed Ethiopia into his new Italian East Africa colony. But if the Italians thought this spelled the end of Selassie, they were gravely mistaken. The Rastafari religion only flourished in his absence, refusing to believe their living God incarnate could be conquered by mere mortals. And within just a few years, the outbreak of World War II in Europe offered Selassie an opportunity for redemption. In 1941, now allied with Britain against Mussolini's Italy, Ethiopian resistance forces succeeded in driving out the Italian occupation and restoring Selassie to his throne after five years in exile. Against immense odds, the much mythologized emperor had fulfilled a supposed prophecy in the eyes of Rastafarians, further cementing belief in his divinity. In the aftermath of victory, Selassie now stood as a global icon of African courage, resistance, and pride in the face of imperialism's campaign to subjugate the continent. But troubles were brewing back home in his now war-ravaged kingdom. Despite his outward reformist instincts, daily life remained bleak for most Ethiopians living under Selassie's rigid feudal system even years after his restoration. Poverty, illiteracy, disease, and malnutrition persisted even as the emperor and nobility lived lavishly. Progressive students and intellectuals increasingly pushed for radical societal change. Angered by the chasm between Selassie's benevolent public persona and the repressive reality back home. But the emperor stubbornly resisted reforms, unwilling to share power or establish a British-style constitutional monarchy. Selassie also repeatedly refused to grant independence to the region of Eritrea, annexing it in 1962 against the will of Eritrean separatists. This sparked a brutal 30-year war for independence that irreparably damaged his domestic reputation. By the early 1970s, after over four continuous decades of lone autocratic rule, the once beloved emperor had grown woefully out of touch, autocratic and resistant to change in the face of growing unrest and demands for reform. In 1974, as an octogenarian, Selassie continued living in decadent opulence, oblivious to the discontent brewing among the masses. In this climate ripe for revolution, a radical Marxist military junta called the Derg overthrew his government in a coup, ending the emperor's storied reign in a shocking fashion. After nearly 50 years of unchecked power, Haile Selassie's imperial dynasty had come to an abrupt end virtually overnight, concluding one of the longest uninterrupted chapters in African history at the hands of the emperor's own disgruntled military. The Der quickly unleashed a horrific red terror campaign of violence, oppression, and political purges leading to over a million deaths. Despite the chaos and bloodshed that followed his overthrow, most Ethiopians saw Selassie's ouster as justified given the poverty, human rights abuses, and stunted development caused by imperial autocracy. 
The fallen absolute monarch lived under house arrest for another year until his death under disputed circumstances in 1975 prevented from completing his memoirs. After an extensive nationwide search, his hidden remains were finally uncovered in 1992 under a latrine and given an imperial funeral in Addis Ababa. But with no restoration of his dynasty, he died alongside Ethiopia's last emperor. So how should history ultimately judge the immense yet contradictory legacy of this monumental African leader? To many global audiences, Selassie came to represent African unity, courage, and pride, a powerful symbol of resisting the racist attitudes of white colonialism. But to his own people, the emperor's record is far more mixed, divisive, and damning. On one hand, Selassie undoubtedly pursued some reforms and modernization, albeit at a glacially slow pace, limited by opposition from traditional nobles, princes, and clergy who enjoyed their privileges under feudalism. But his deep reluctance to meaningfully share power or democratize can be seen in retrospect as devastatingly delaying the inevitable push for representative government. With the benefit of hindsight, Selassie seems a tragically imperfect ruler, one possessing some progressive instincts, but who ultimately fell victim to the corrupting tendency of autocratic power over his many decades of lone rule. A leader who achieves much, yet failed to meet the evolving challenges of an increasingly modern world. As Selassie himself once said, throughout history, it has been the inaction of those who could have acted the indifference of those who should have known better, the silence of the voice of justice when it mattered most. Perhaps the emperor's most significant, if unintended, legacy was as a catalyst and focal point. His stiff resistance to change provoked the popular discontent that finally toppled the archaic imperial system over which he presided. Out of the wreckage of his complicated reign emerged a new post-imperial Ethiopia, Selassie's overthrow and death marked the definitive end of Ethiopia's ancient feudal order, concluding its Solomonic imperial dynasty after nearly 3,000 uninterrupted years in power. For all his mythic status, the emperor had disastrously failed to see the untenable nature of feudal autocracy in the modern age of African decolonization. Like all monumental historical figures, the passage of time forces a more measured perspective of Haile Selassie, an imperfect mortal not immune to the corrupting nature of absolute power, not the sacred messiah of the Rastafarian faith. A leader who tried yet tragically failed to fully transcend the limits of his era, prescribed role and the insular imperial system that bred his autocracy. In the final analysis, Selassie leaves behind a profoundly conflicted legacy, professing reformist instincts yet actively resisting democratic change, praised as an anti-colonial icon yet oppressing and stunting his own people under a backward system long overdue for the dustbin of history. He deserves some credit for symbolically championing African decolonization and solidarity. But his deep inability to adapt, reform, and relinquish the feudal system that granted him absolute power ultimately proved his undoing. The myth could not forever obscure the harsh reality of imperial oppression for Ethiopia's masses. Selassie's extraordinary life offers a cautionary parable that even progressive-minded leaders often tragically struggle to deliver lasting systemic change without surrendering the very autocratic power that breeds entrenched resistance to reform. The emperor's admirable ideals too frequently failed to align with his stubborn actions. His storied reign exposes the fragility of personal rule, where the perceived interests of the state become fatally inseparable from those of its privileged ruler. So what do you see as Selassie's most important achievements and his greatest mistakes as emperor? Does the mythos around him match the far more complex historical reality? What lessons does his life offer future leaders? Let me know in the comments. 
and make sure to like and subscribe for more deep dives analyzing monumental lives that shaped the course of history. Thanks for watching. Thank you.